Hello everyone. Welcome to our workshop. My name is Donnie Sand. I'm the program coordinator for End the Epidemic, West Virginia's fight against opioid abuse. Today we're going to be doing a workshop uh, that's going to give you some good insight into how we can fix this problem in West Virginia. We're a, we're a small program that's based out of Huntington, West Virginia. We have a lot of support from supporting agencies such as Huntington Beach Fire, uh, sorry, Huntington um, Police and Fire, we have the D.A.R.E. program helping us, multiple church activities, and um, a lot of other support that's been really helpful uh, as we start up this, this program to help these wonderful people in their, in their terrible trial of opioid abuse. So uh, today our workshop, we're going to be talking about some objectives. First, uh, we're going to describe our mission and our passion, um, try, and fit, try and give you a little bit of, of a better understanding as to what we're all about and what we want to do for you and your loved ones. Next, we're going to describe the problem in West Virginia. Uh, today we'll give you some facts about opioid abuse in West Virginia and how it's been affecting uh, people and their families throughout the uh, these last, this about this last decade. We're going to, we're going to talk about uh, what we're going to be doing to help, how we can be able to intervene in these people's lives and help them, or even help you, and to um, create a better system in order to uh, allow some intervention, some recovery, and even prevention uh, from from this terrible disease. Uh, we're going to talk about the tar our target populations and the program features. We're going to talk about how you can help. Uh, whether it be for help, helping yourself, helping those around you, helping a loved one, helping anyone who is affected by this. And then we're going to talk about the application of it as well. Our mission statement uh, in the epidemic is dedicated to providing the highest quality education, prevention, and intervention for those affected by the use of opioids. We wanted to create a general mission statement that encompasses uh, any, anyone that's affected by opioids. We didn't, we didn't want to just focus on people who are addicted to, opioid, to opioids or painkillers, but we wanted to talk to their families. We wanted to get to know these people, and that's why we created this mission statement, and it's to create a, uh, an environment that is helpful, that's going to be a welcoming environment for anyone who's affected by opioids, whether it be personally or with family members. We do this because we have recognized over the last 10 to 15 years the effects of opioids and how it's been detrimental to the people in West Virginia. Our goal is to help people. Our goal is to be there for those who are no longer able to care for themselves because of their addiction. They've gone so far to the point where they can't take care of themselves and they live, uh, they live for the next high. Uh, we're, how we're going to do this is we're going to we're going to do this through education and prevention, and then uh, intervention. Um, our target populations are going to be for our adolescents and teens. Uh, mainly, we're going to be focusing on education and prevention, uh, giving them tools and mechanisms in order to prevent them from uh, even being curious as uh, curious about opioids and what they can do. Uh, we also want to more or less scare scare them, but not in a way that's like a horror film, but to scare them into um, making the decision to never touch opioids unless it really is necessary. Our second population, or what we call Battlefront 2, is going to be education and intervention to stop addiction for those who are already affected by opioids. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to give you some facts about opioids. Since the 1990s, an increase in the prescription of opioids has had an increase in overdose and deaths from opioids from the, uh, since the 90s. From 99 to 2017, almost 218,000 people have died in the United States from overdose related to prescription opioids. Overdose deaths involving prescription opioids were five times higher in 2017 than they were in, in 1999. West Virginia has one of the highest mortality rates from opioid abuse in the United States. And this also, it's not just West Virginia, it's Ohio, New Hampshire, and, and in other states as well. So we've recognized that West Virginia has been um, one of the meccas for 
having such a devastating result as to opioid abuse, and we'll talk a little bit more about the reasons why. Uh, so why why in West Virginia? We're focusing on five uh, specific um, fields as to why West Virginia has become uh, so affected by it. Uh, they've had an increase in poverty. They've had a decrease in education. Their unemployment level is very high. Uh, they have, they had, and then, thank goodness, we're kind of coming in this program. This program is kind of coming into a time where they're tightening up those drug laws for prescription medications. And then also, early age drug use is also prevalent in West Virginia. Uh, first, we're going to talk about our increased poverty. The state's poverty rate for blacks was 31.7% in 2017. Women in West Virginia faced higher poverty rates than men, and in West Virginia, the poverty rate for women was 20.9% compared to the 17.2% for men. So we can see in this picture here, uh, coal mining is one of the major um, uh, one of the major industries in West Virginia, and we've seen and we've seen. Actually, we'll jump ahead to uh, West Virginia here for unemployment. Coal mining amounts for 18,000 jobs in West Virginia. Coal miners working uh, because it's such a high risk job, have a risk, have a higher risk for injury and treatment for pain is, is increased. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but you can see that West Virginia for their unemployment is number 50 out of 50 in the United States. That's terrible. It's really bad. It is mainly based off of people's addictions to these opioids and they're unable to work. Uh, going back up to our decreased education, the number 47 out of 50. Uh, they don't necessarily have the infrastructure to really create a great education system. So what happens is that people are dropping out of school. They get they start working early, they start working in the mines, they get injured, and then they get medications and it's terrible. Uh, mining operations proved to be a flashpoint for opioid abuse and prescription practices liberalized as workers tried to um, uh, stave, off, stave off injuries with opioids. So that's uh, this law, these laws are actually being tightened up to restricting the amount of opioids that can be given to a single person. Um, and then early age drug use, addiction by the numbers. Less than two cents goes into prevention and treatment for opioids. But over but be, uh, over 90% began smoking, drinking, and using other drugs before they before they turned the age 18. So this is uh, this is mainly tackling our, our younger population um, with education and prevention. Uh, so what, what we can do to help our our first battlefront battlefront one is adolescents and teens. We want to focus on education and prevention. Uh, Huntington uh, Police Department is implementing a DARE program. Um, and so they're going to be going to elementary and middle schools to help in educate these kids about the risks of opioids and how they can recognize in their own families and in their own homes how, it, how it's already affecting them that they might not even know. Next we're going to be talking, we're going to uh, provide counseling for these children who have family members who are struggling with opioid abuse. Uh, we have, we're going to implement healthy activities to help these kids find, uh, make good friends, lifelong friends that's going to help them stay on a good path so they don't uh, so they don't fall into the trap of these opioids. And then secondly, uh, or after that, we're also going to give some situational assistance with group activities to provide them with ways and actual mechanisms so they can actually, so they can uh, fight, uh, fight the urge and fight and actually make a decision early in life to not touch opioids. And then we also provide spiritual assistance upon request from uh, local churches and organizations that are offering their help. Our second battlefront is on young adults affected by, by opioid abuse. Uh, so we're going to continue with education, but we're also going to have intervention as well. We're going to provide counseling for individuals and families, interventions uh, as needed, um, so we can help coordinate interventions for family members who are, who are struggling. Uh, we have doctor consults, employment seminars, uh, that's going to be a big one uh, to help these people get back up on their feet and get uh, and be uh, employed again. Uh, clean alternatives to opioids and then spiritual assistance again upon request. Um, how can you help individuals? You might be asking yourself, how do you help? Speak up. Show, show, show some love and support for these people. Learn about the risks associated with opioids and make the decision now to stick to your decisions. Find the courage to help others with their addiction and be a good example. Uh, Battlefront 2, recognize your addiction. 
one of the, the, the first stages of actually getting better is to admit that you have a problem. Decide that you want to change. Learn about your addiction and, and the physiological changes it's making in your body. Seek help and counseling and reconnect with your family. Uh, those are going to be our big major steps in order to get these people well again and then making a plan to change. And it's going to be working with doctors, counselors, and family members to make that plan. Um, so after we're done with this PowerPoint, we're going to talk a little bit about creating a life mission statement. What do you want for your life? What do you want for your family? What do you want for your goals? Uh, we're going to try to make a written letter to yourself uh, for 10 years in the future. We're going to we're going to have some fun with that activity and be able to give kids the opportunity to set some really good goals. Uh, we're going to have to set a group time capsule, time capsule for the kids uh, so in 10 years they can open it up and see uh, see what life was like 10 years, uh, 10 years uh, earlier. We're going to help create packs with friends and families and create memorable experiences with saying no to drugs. Uh, our biggest thing is that we're going to teach how to be accountable for yourself and to support those around you um, and support the fa your family and friends who are affected by, by opioids. So uh, we're all done with the PowerPoint now. If there is any questions, we can go ahead and open up for questions. Uh, questioning. I put my contact information on here. You can contact me. My name is, again, Donnie Sand, one 888 that's the address for in the epidemic, West Virginia's fight against opioid abuse. We're going to go ahead and break up in groups now and um, do some activities. Thank you.